Hey everyone, it's Amanda from the Little Bluebird Gallery and I am going to share a fun tip with you today. Um, we've been doing some different kinds of paintings over in my creative community and <clears throat> I'm still trying to catch up, play catch up with, with some things because I was sick for basically the whole month of, <laughs> of July and um, Anyway, I'm just trying to get everything kind of back up to speed and back up to what I want it to be. So I've moved into my studio room that I used to use. I've got it all fixed up and, and ready for, for creativity. And before I got sick, <laughs> I had mentioned that we were going to do some kind of tip, art tip, maybe every week. I think I had can't even remember now because it's been so long. I think I had said something like Tuesdays I would have an art tip on Tuesdays <clears throat> and it would be here on Facebook and also posted over on my Instagram and over on my <laughs> my YouTube channel but I got sick and I had to just kind of let myself get well and not do anything that had to do with with art for a little while but I'm feeling better I'm back and creating again and um, those of you who are here hi Christine <clears throat> from my creative community I shared this <clears throat> this tip in our video for today um, and I just thought that it was just a small part of of our overall lesson that could really help help others so I thought that I would share it on here also so um <clears throat> Thanks, Christine. I'm glad that I'm doing better, too. I'm still having to clear my throat constantly, but if I have to talk for very long, you can tell that I'm still not 100%. But um, anyway, in the creative community, we've been doing sunflowers for the month of July. So we did <clears throat> several different paintings of sunflowers, and we've been practicing on paper. So... If you've been following me, you know that I like to use these mixed media pads. And it's just, it's a notebook, not a notebook, but um, a sketchbook. And you can paint on the paper because it is a little bit thicker. You can use acrylic paints. You can use your collage work. You can even do watercolor on here, whatever. But what tends to happen sometimes is... <clears throat> When you're painting, your paper begins to do this. So it can be hard if you're trying to paint on a piece of paper that is warped <laughs> and is starting to curl up, then that can be a problem. And before I told you that you could use these little clips to hold your paper down as you're painting, but actually one of the creative community members mentioned this and they said that if you will paint the back side of your paper, then the front side will lay flat. And so I had never done that before. I thought I would just try it and see what happened. And it worked really well. So we did this painting, not this Friday, but the today is Friday. Not today, but the week before. No, it was the week before that. The first Friday, <laughs> In July, we did this painting in the creative community. And when I painted it, the paper curled like this, as you can see. And so for this Friday's video, I wanted to add collage, which is just adding paper to your painting. So this started out looking like this, and then I added the paper and changed the background color, and we did this but it was super hard to do because the paper was curling up. So the trick or the tip that I'm sharing is to use something like gesso. You can even just use some paint. Paint the back side of your paper and it will lay flat. See how flat this one is? Well, it's kind of hard to see because I'm holding it, but it is completely flat when I put it down on my table. Now, when you start putting the actual paint on the back, it may look like it's gonna curl up a little bit, but once it dries, 
it is completely flat. So I'm gonna do this. Let's see if you can see on my table down here. That works. Um, and I just used regular gesso is what I did. And get all my stuff out of the way. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this one is definitely still curly. See how it's, it's flipped up there pretty majorly. This one's the one that I painted the back of and it is, it's laying flat and so much easier to work with. So that is my tip for you <laughs> for this week. You can use gesso. You can even use clear gesso. You could use, you know, paint, whatever you wanted to use and just put it on the back side. So let's do that on this one. I'm gonna paint the back of this one. By the way, if you want to learn to paint these flowers or collage these flowers, you can do that over in my creative community. My creative club learned this for the month of July, for the month of August, I'm sorry. No, what is this month? <laughs> For the month of August, I think I've said July the whole time. I was sick in July. In August, we are doing this. Okay, so all you have to do, this is probably not gonna be um, very effective for you to see the results of right now because it's gonna be wet. But I just wanted to show you, let me grab a brush over here. I just wanted to show you what it's going to do. So, like I said, this one has been painted on the back, and now it is completely flat. This one is not. And this is how I did it. I just took some gesso, spread it everywhere. And right now it looks like it's gonna get worse because it's really beginning to curl. And so when I first learned that this was something that you could do and I tried it, I thought this is not gonna work because this is making it worse. Now it's so curled up that I can't, I can't even paint the back of it. But once it dries, it's completely flat, just like this. And this helps you or it has helped me tremendously to let go of the idea of waste. And <clears throat> part, let me turn this back towards me. Part of learning how to paint is practice. You've got to be able to practice, but you've also got to be able to practice without restricting yourself. And a lot of times we take our, our canvas or whatever um, whatever it may be that you're wanting to paint on. It, may, it doesn't have to be canvas. But if, if you are, are paying good money for something like, like a canvas and you're using it for practice, then sometimes it makes you uh, nervous. It keeps you kind of held back so that you're not you're not allowing yourself to be as creative as you could be if you're painting on something that you don't feel like it's so precious, that it, it costs so much money, or you don't want to waste it. So doing something like this on paper, <clears throat> the paper, in, in my brain anyway, the way it works is paper is not as precious to me as a canvas. So I feel more um, free to experiment and to try things on paper rather than on canvas. And so one of the restrictions to using paper is that it can curl and it can cause you some problems because it's not stretched and flat and easy to paint on. But if you just gesso the back of it 
you, if you would gesso the back of it before you started painting on the front of it, or even gesso both sides of it, then you're gonna have a good flat surface that you can practice on that's not expensive and that is something that you can, can really explore and try things and not restrict yourself and not feel like I'm, I'm wasting my supplies or I'm wasting my money or, or whatever it may be that you, you feel like you're being held back from experimenting with. So, <clears throat> Peggy says, I don't feel bad about paper, but canvas gives me aches that I will not, that I will not paint well on it. Yes, so when I first started painting, I just used canvases, but at the same time, um, you can get canvases that are not expensive, but there's something about a canvas that makes you feel like it's permanent. Then there's something about paper that helps you to feel like it's not. <laughs> so when you're practicing, I highly recommend that you use paper. Um, I've done so many things on paper, practicing, teaching lessons, things like that, um, that we've done in the creative community, in the creative club, and you can paint things on paper and and it will will work just as well as a canvas. You could even frame paper. Um, so if you do something on paper and you really like it, you can still frame it and keep it. And at the same time, you are allowing yourself to practice. So you may wanna paint something several times before you get everything tweaked and done exactly the way that you want it and then you can transfer or not really transfer but paint the same subject on a canvas that will be permanent and um, paper is just good for that that purpose and I really I really like painting on paper um, so that's my my tip for this week paint on the back side of your paper just so the front and the back if you want to before you get started and that will give you a good flat surface that you can paint on and practice. And I've also put a link here. I have a new freebie. So if you're interested in getting ready for fall, I know I've seen a lot of fall decorations in the stores. I've seen people posting about fall, painting pumpkins and things. <clears throat> Last year at about this time, I did a live workshop where we painted I think it may be in this book here. We painted a, a pumpkin with some hydrangeas and some, maybe it's not, and some um, cotton. I can't remember if that's all that was in the pumpkin or not, but that workshop is available now on my website for free if you're interested, and I put the link here in the comments or it's underneath the video. It's here somewhere. It's my featured link. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it. Um, so you can hop over to my website and, and learn how to paint a pumpkin with hydrangeas. Um, that is, is a free workshop. It's a, a two hour, there are two videos. So it's a two hour workshop where I walk you through learning how to do that if you're interested. And um, I guess I will see you guys later. I'm using my phone so I can't see comments as well. Um, let's see, Peggy said, I haven't painted in two months, but I did your sunflower classes in the CC and I've painted three paintings in one night. Thank you for the inspiration, that's awesome. So this was one that we did. We also, I also tried something a little bit different in the CC. When I say the CC, I mean the creative community. This month, <clears throat> so a lot of times people tell me that they have trouble loosening up or painting um, kind of impressionistically, is that a word? <laughs> and so what we did was we used fewer strokes with our brush. So we started out with this sunflower here and it has a lot more details. Then we painted this one, and then we did this one and this one, and each time we did a little exercise, and each time we, we loosened up a little bit more and a little bit more. So we did that. Um, of 
course, we did this one. And then today's video is adding collage work to your paintings. And then next Friday, we'll have our question and answer time in there. So I'm glad that it was inspiring and helped you to get back to painting. Um, Christine said, I was just prepping to do that workshop. I'm so glad. Okay, I'm gonna go for now and I will see you guys next time. Hopefully, I'm gonna get back into a routine and we'll be back on here weekly again, sharing some tips. You can check my YouTube channel. If you miss it here live, it will be um, put over there too. And there, of course, are free tutorials over on my YouTube channel. There are some free ones on my, my blog. And um, then there's lots and lots, over 200 tutorials in the creative community if you're interested in learning more about painting. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.